One technology company is innovating to bridge the gender pay gap. SAP, a multinational company that provides software to businesses, is working to level the playing field in the technology sector by taking steps to close the gender wage gap. SAP's U U.S. division conducted an internal study of more than 13,000 employees to make sure that female and male employees are paid equally and eliminate any discrepancies by adjusting salaries. Joining us now is president of SAP North America, Jennifer Morgan. So how did this all turn out? Well, we were pretty pleased. You know, we have a very broad culture around diversity and inclusion, but it goes further than talking the talk. You got to walk the talk. And so for us, obviously this is important to uh, to everybody and it's a big topic uh, in the tech community. So we looked at all of our employees across the, across the United States and we found discrepancies. And but what we found is that 99% of our employees mm -hmm. were paid equally and fairly for the same work and there was only about a 1% discrepancy. And so then where you found a discrepancy, you made up for that? We did. We made pay adjust adjustments to those uh, employees, upward adjustments. About 70% of the uh, adjustments were for women and 30% were for men. Jennifer, what's the breakdown between men and women in terms of the employees that you have? And, and if you look at more um, management level jobs, is it still in the tech industry, even, even in the case of your company, is it still more significantly more men than women? Yeah, we still have work to do. In North America, we have about 34% of our employees are female, mm -hmm. and we have about 30% uh, women in, in leadership roles, which is, I think, uh, a little bit higher than the average. Yeah. And it's so wonderful to see you here in a leadership yeah. role. You know, it's, yeah. it's wonderful. Um, and I'm just wondering, what, you know, what is being done, and I'm sure you have an insight into this, to help recruit younger women from universities, mm -hmm. some of that top talent, because those numbers are increasing into companies like SAP and other tech companies, so that we do eventually see these more women filter up to leadership positions. Absolutely. Well, I think it's important. And this we're excited about what we've done because number one, it really motivates our existing employees. It makes them feel great about their career, where they can go, and it's important as we recruit and uh, you know want to go get that new talent that's out there today. So for us, it's really important that culture is really important today. It's it's a war on talent, especially in our industry. Yeah. So having a culture that people want to be part of, right? So it makes you, it, it it drives competition. Absolutely, it makes you more competitive in the workplace. So a lot of tech companies have been, as you mentioned, facing scrutiny over the number of women in their workforce. Uh, so, as female executives in technology, we just showed an image of a lot of them, including Megan Whitman. Mm -hmm. Meg Whitman, are there? Are you seeing that difference? I mean, when we look at who is leading Fortune 500 companies, you're still not seeing the number of female CEOs that you would think at this mm -hmm. point, based on what you guys are doing and a lot of other companies. Why is that? You know, it's interesting. You hear the term sometimes, unconscious bias. And when you look at your employee base or you look at uh, maybe promoting somebody to the next level, a lot of times people might think about the job having a lot of travel, a lot of demands. And unconsciously, when you're considering people for that job, you might think, gosh, they still have kids who are in school. Um, it's going to be maybe a little bit harder for them. It's an unconscious bias. There's, That's a, there's definitely a psychological gender bias in Silicon Valley in yep. particular, where if, if, when people are in meetings, I've heard stories, women will mm -hmm. come in and people automatically assume they're in marketing and not in a technical role. And it's just the assumption, but it takes a long time to break that. And what's interesting is we're, we're seeing technology being helpful to actually identify that. So for us, we actually have some... Uh, algorithms, machine learning algorithms that point out where you might have areas of unconscious bias. If you're putting together a job description, certain words that you might use as an example might focus the attention on a job being uh, assumed to be for a woman versus a man. So it's really about just creating an awareness. Do you think what you guys did could equally and fairly apply to other industries? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You hear about it so much in the tech industry just because the numbers yeah. show there aren't as many women. Right. But I think it's important. I think it's important and obviously there's still a lot of work to do. All right. Good stuff. Thank you. Jennifer yeah. Morgan for being here this morning. Thanks Good to for have having you. Me. All right.